Slavery is a very controversial topic, of course it is, and you may or may not know this, but Islam actually has rules surrounding it, and it does not actually completely forbid it. But before you say anything, before you start hating and leaving hate comments, just please hear me out on this video because it does actually make logical sense. Slavery is permissible in Islam, but that does not mean it's recommended, it just means it's not not allowed, you know what I mean? So there are two reasons for this. If the Quran completely abolished slavery from day one, if it just said free all your slaves, no slavery anymore, it would just cause chaos and it wouldn't have worked because the socio-economic structure of the Arab, the African and the European societies of that time heavily relied on slavery. An abolishment from day one would simply just not work. It would have created a huge barrier for entry for anyone who wanted to join Islam at that time because again everyone was dependent on slaves so if slavery was just abolished from day one it may have even prevented Islam from becoming what it is today. The second reason is that slavery is gonna happen anyway. Of course the Jews, Christians and pagans of that time had no issue with slavery or with the the mistreating of slaves so Islam stepped in as a kind of way to not completely abolish slavery because that wouldn't have worked but as a way to kind of regulate it and to make it as humane as it possibly could be. Now it's useful to understand what slavery actually was in that time because me and you we were taught from a western standpoint right we were taught about what slavery was like in America and Europe and of course slavery was horrible everyone was being mistreated human rights violations everywhere it was not right you know people were being treated like animals but in Islam it wasn't completely like that. In Islam the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him encouraged treating slaves so well that actually freedom would be a worse alternative to just being the slave. One hadith states that you should feed slaves from the same food you eat, clothe them from the same clothes you wear. It also says that they couldn't be tortured. Now of course this sounds like okay this is just basic human rights right and yes it is but back then the way some people treated slaves and even recently like 200 years ago in America they didn't give the slaves the same food we eat or the same clothes. In Islam we actually had some kind of equality between the slaves and their masters. Not only that but slaves actually had the means to buy themselves out of slavery if they had the means to. Which some actually did. Slaves weren't completely confined to serving their masters. Some could actually make their own money through trading or they could even own property and they could get married. They could even make legal cases against their masters to gain freedom if they had their slave rights infringed upon. And yes, slaves had rights. So you, you remember that in America, slaves didn't really have rights, did they? And in Islam, there was actually like fully prescribed slave rights. Not to mention all of the times in the Quran when it is mandatory to free a slave. In fact, most of the time slavery is actually mentioned in the Quran, it's just some kind of ruling telling you when you should free a slave. So if you broke a fast during Ramadan, broke an oath, killed someone by accident, all of these things and more, you had to free a slave as kind of recompensation for it. And if you didn't have a slave, there would be other things you could do, but the primary thing is you should free a slave if you have one. It's also important for me to talk about concubines or female sex slaves. And yes, they did exist at that time. Not only in Arab societies, of course, they existed everywhere. And yes, Islam did not completely forbid them. Though again, Islam did have rules to kind of help it dissolve over time and to regulate it more. First of all, prostitution of a concubine was completely forbidden. You couldn't do that. And if you had a child with the concubine, the children of those concubines would automatically be considered free. And the concubine would become free after the master's death. And this just sounds normal, right? But actually, in Arab society back then, if you had a child with a concubine, that child could also be like born into slavery, which is absolutely messed up, right? Regardless of gender, freeing of slaves was seen as a very, very righteous deed that you could do back then one of the best deeds. And after the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, rich Muslims actually started to free slaves or they started to buy slaves and then just give them freedom or give them work opportunities. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him did this with two of his wives. Two of his wives were concubines at first, but then he freed them and married them. And the Prophet Abraham peace be upon him did something similar when he had a concubine named Hagar who he had a child with and then married. Look, the only reason I'm making this video is because so many people like to see this as some kind of proof against Islam. They say, oh look, Islam allows slavery, get those Muslims and send them back to Pakistan. And it just so happens that a lot of these people happen to be Jews or Christians. And as much as you might not like it, I'm sorry, but there are several instances of slavery in the Bible and the Torah. But here's the thing, it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't matter because slavery was just a thing back then. You couldn't abolish slavery back then. It was just not possible. It was just one of those things you had to live with. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Aladim, the all-knowing, he knew this. So he sent the Quran to the people when they were ready for it. And the Quran kind of helped to slowly phase out slavery in the Arab world because there were all of these rules that said, if you do this, you have to free a slave. If you do this, you have to free a slave. Eventually, all of the slaves were free, right? And I also say it doesn't matter because slavery is illegal basically everywhere, right? So in Islam, we follow the law of the land. 
Christianity, Judaism, same thing. You have to follow the law of the land unless it directly oppresses you, right? So even if it's permissible, it means nothing because it doesn't mean we're going to have slaves now because it's illegal. And if a Jew or a Christian wants to say anything bad about Islam, they can't because the Bible and the Torah also had slavery. And it's fine because that was just a thing back then. And you might say, well, slavery does actually still exist nowadays. And look, these countries are Muslim countries. Checkmate, Muslim. Well, yeah, you're right, but the trade of slaves is prohibited in Islam. And there's a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said you cannot enslave a free man, right? So whatever these people are doing, even if they're Muslim, it doesn't mean we condone their actions, okay? They're sinning, they're gonna taste punishment, we don't condone it. And you shouldn't judge the, this huge group of people, 1.8 billion people, based on this small group of individuals that are doing bad things. It's just not right. Just to be clear though, we Muslims aren't telling you about all of these good things about slavery in Islam because we think it was good. No, slavery was not good. We don't think it's good. We just think it's so much better than the way the Europeans, the Greeks, the Romans treat slaves. It's definitely a lot better than them, but it does not mean that slavery is good. I'm just making this video so you can understand why the Quran doesn't completely forbid slavery because it would have just been impossible, right? Thankfully, nowadays slavery is much less common and we as Muslims were happy about this. We believe that the end goal of all of these rules in the Quran was the complete abolishment of slavery, right? All of this freeing of slaves, it had the end goal of creating a slave-free world. And I know there is still slavery, but not much we can do about it. We don't control it. So yeah. Anyways, I probably got a lot of details wrong in this video. So if you know of any, please let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. May Allah bless you all and may Allah give victory and peace to the people of Palestine. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.